So good morning. It's, it's a great pleasure to be presenting to you uh, the results of this uh, IFM 0701 MM20 study conducted in newly diagnosed myeloma patients uh, ineligible for stem cell transplantation. So the study is also referred as the first trial which stands for frontline investigation of Revlimid versus standard thalidomide. So just a couple of background slides for uh, myeloma. As you know, myeloma is a plasma cell malignancy and uh, this disease uh, accounts for approximately uh, one to two percent of cancers and approximately 10 percent of hematological malignancies. Uh, in 2012, uh, the number of new cases in the EU was approximately 20,000 and the number of deaths were approximately 12,000 with similar numbers in the US. So myeloma is a disease of the elderly patients. Uh, the median, survival, the median uh, age at the time of diagnosis is approximately 65 to 70 years, and approximately 30% of patients have an age of 75. Basically, myeloma uh, is a chronic uh, and incurable disease with a median of our survival of 30 to 60 months. So this slide is presenting the, the current treatment approach to elderly uh, transplant ineligible patients with myeloma. Uh, in the past uh, five to 10 years, uh, we, we demonstrated that malfalanprednisone in combination with thalidomide or bortezomib uh, was superior to, to the traditional malfalanprednisone regimen in, in, patient, in elderly patients with newly diagnosed myeloma. We, using uh, the, the, the MPT combination regimen, the median PFS was approximately 20 months and it was approximately 18 months with the VMP regimen. So basically, at, at, the, at the present time, uh, in the, and especially in the EU, but also in, in, in many other countries, uh, MP in combination with thalidomide or bortezomib are preferred regimens recommended by NCCN guidelines in the US and many other national guidelines for patients with newly diagnosed myeloma ineligible for stem cell transplant. So these treatments have been based on, on fixed duration, uh, mainly due to toxicities associated with long-term therapy, especially neurological toxicity. So this is the first trial uh, uh, design. So the study was designed to compare the efficacy and safety of lenalidomide and low-dose dexamethasone uh, given continuously or for a fixed duration uh, with melphalanprednisone thalidomide. So the f we had three arms in the first trial. Uh, the first arm was continuous uh, lenalidomide and low-dose dexamethasone given until progressive myeloma. Uh, the other arm was lenalidomide, low-dose dexamethasone given for 72 weeks, 18 cycles. And the, the control arm was melphalanprednisone in combination with thalidomide given for 72 weeks, 12 cycles. So the primary endpoint was progression-free survival and stratification uh, was based on age, country, and ISS stage. So the first trial is the largest uh, study ever conducted for registration in newly diagnosed myeloma patients. So we enrolled 1,623 patients in 246 centers in 18 countries, in North America, US, and Canada, in, in several European countries, and also in the Asia Pacific area with China, South Korea, Taiwan, Australia, and New Zealand. So the study was sponsored by Salgin Pharmaceutical uh, in partnership with the, uh, the French and Belgium Cooperative Group for Myeloma, also known as the IFM, which is reflected by the high number of patients enrolled in France and Belgium. So the 1,623 patients were enrolled between August 2008 and March 2011. Uh, 535 patients were allocated to the continuous ERD arm, 541 allocated to the ERD-18 arm, and 547 allocated to MPT. Uh, at the data cutoff date of uh, May 24, 2013, uh, with a medium follow-up of approximately three years, uh, 121 patients, representing 23% of the patients allocated to the continuous ERD arm, were still on study treatment. More patients allocated to lenalidomide uh, containing arms uh, completed 72 weeks of treatment. 
compared with uh, patients allocated to the MPT, and 39% of patients uh, in the continuous early arm uh, were treated for more than two years. A study discontinuation due to adverse events were infrequent, uh, noted in 11 to 14% of patients. With regard to the primary endpoint, PFS, uh, the continuous RD was uh, able to uh, reduce the, the PFS events by 28% versus MPT. The hazard ratio for the primary comparison was 0.72 with a very significant p-value. The same magnitude of improvement was noted between RD continuous and RD 18. The median PFS was 25.5 months for continuous RD versus 20.7 months for RD 18 and 21.2 months for MPT. At 36 months, uh, the, we, we noted a 20% improvement in PFS uh, from 23% to 42% for continuous RD. And uh, at this time point, we had uh, an approximately one year difference in the, in the PFS curves. So overall survival was a key secondary endpoint. So this is an interim analysis for overall survival. For this analysis, the median follow-up for all surviving patients is, is approximately three years with 574 deaths, 35% of uh, intent to treat population. The, with regard to the, the primary comparison, continuous 30 versus MPT, the hazard ratio was 0.78 with a nominal p-value of 0 0.017. The median, uh, the four-year uh, OS uh, estimated survival rates were 59% for continuous RD, 55% for RD18, and 51% for MPT. So these are, these are the conclusions. So the continuous RD significantly extended PFS with a survival benefit versus MPT. For the primary endpoint PFS, the hazard ratio was 0.72 with a very significant p-value. Uh, a consistent benefit across uh, most subgroup was noted, and RD continuous was also better than RD 18. The three-year PFS was 42% with continuous RD versus 23% for RD 18 and MPT. At the time of this plan interim analysis for survival, the hazard ratio was 0.78 with a nominal p-value of 0.017. The response rate uh, uh, was 75% uh, for uh, continuous RD and RD18 with a median duration of response for continuous RD of 35 months, uh, which is quite long. Continuous RD was superior to MPT across all other efficacy secondary endpoints. The safety profile with continuous RD was manageable. Hematological and non-hematological adverse events were as expected for these regimens. In addition to that, the incidence of hematological second primary malignancy was lower with continuous RD versus MPT. And finally, in newly diagnosed myeloma patients transplant ineligible, the first trial establishes continuous RD as a new standard of care. Thank you very much for your attention.